Check, check, check. So am I audible or is it too noisy? I am not using the headphone today, although I have, but if it is clearly audible. But your voice will not be audible like this. Okay, so to hear your responses, I have to use that phone because that puja preparation is also going on nearby. The Shera puja, or I think some some other. Check. Check, 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 check. Okay. Am I audible now? Yeah. At least the indicator is showing something good. Yeah. So I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Some of your friends are yet to join. Five of you are there.
Actually, the link is also created a little late, so maybe I should switch the Hello. Yes. 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 Link is sent, right? Now you can join. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we will use the same resource which we used yesterday. Do more practice, and this time we will practice measures of dispersion. Measures of dispersion. What do, uh, what does that mean? We are trying to have a measure of how distributed, how spread out the data is. Are all the data points concentrate near some central point, which is the main media or more, or are they dispersed? Different different data points have different values, vastly different values from the mean. Yeah. So to decide how distributed or how spread out the data is, we need to have a reference point. Usually, that reference point is the mean, is the mean or average arithmetic average of the data. So when we talk about measures of dispersion, it is dispersion with respect to the mean. How far on an average each data point is from the mean of the entire data set. So that is the mean. So uh, diagrammatically, if we go C, so this is yesterday's. So, see, this is one data set. Or two axes are even not <laughs> one axis is enough. Okay. So, this in this we have these data points. The mean somewhere here, yeah. and we have data points say like this. Uh, 
have different data points like this. This is one case. First case. Suppose these are heights. These are heights. And uh, on this axis, you have height. And these are the people with those uh, heights plotted uh, here. Okay. This person has this height. This, much height. this person has this much height. Like this. So, this is one set of data. Another set of data is like this. Somewhere is the mean of the data. And one person's height is here. This height is here. Third person's height is here. Fourth person's height is here. Second. So the theory we have tried to show this. Now, in which of these cases do you think the data is more distributed, more spread out? First case or second case? Yes. Second case, sir. Check, check, check. check. So can you hear us? Yes, now I can hear you. Yes. So second case, obviously. It's more spread out. Second, yes. So second case, data is more distributed, more spread out. That is, when we try to calculate the measure, we will see that second case has more uh, higher standard deviation, higher variance and higher standard de deviation. Yeah. So square root of variance is the standard deviation. So in the second case, data is more spread out. Hence, we will get more variance and more standard deviation. Okay. So this is the basic concept. This is the one measure of dispersion. measures of dispersion. dispersion. Okay. Shall I write it in for words? So you are not audible properly as there is lots of background noise. Yes, background noise will be there today. Uh, it's not just from one person. <laughs> it's a crowd of 50 people who are pre doing preparation for their puja. Uh, I can probably close the door just as well. So I have lightly closed the door, but people will be opening it soon. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. On one side, there is some joy, some joy in everybody's mind. Check, check. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you are also very clearly audible. Okay. Yes. Okay. So one measure, the most sophisticated, most robust measure is standard deviation. Which is the square root of variance. Square root of values. Other measures, the simplest measure is range. 
what is range just the highest value minus the lowest value in a given data then the third uh, which is a little more involved is interquartile range if you remember to plot the box plots to draw the box plots also we needed interquartile range and first quartile second quartile third quartile then we could draw the box plots so these three are basic measures of dispersion to measure how spread out the data is standard deviation and variance formula if you remember what is the formula for variance summation of all the deviations on the mean square of all the deviations on the mean and average of that this is the formula for variance and standard deviation which is just the square root of this Psi minus x bar square root of summation of x i minus x bar root square divided by n. Standard deviation is in the same units as the variable. Okay, whichever variable we are measuring, height, weight, so height if we are measuring in centimeters, standard deviation will also be in centimeters. But variance will be in centimeter square. Yeah. Centimeter in case of length, it still makes some sense. Centimeter squares, but if say it is temperature or weight, yeah, kilogram, unit of weight, kilogram. So we will get standard deviation in kilogram and variance in kilogram square. So kilogram square doesn't mean anything actually. I mean, it doesn't mean anything which we can pictureize, visualize, or Feel. So, standard deviation can be used more easily than variance. That is why. So, so let us try out few problems. So how does the standard deviation change when 7 is replaced with 12? 7 is replaced with 12. Try this out. Take one minute. Uh, let me tell you, it is not the easiest of problem. So you will have to work through it. What I say, manat karna So just take one minute. I'll, I'll uh, close my audio and video.
Okay, uh, one of you is saying it decreases. How do you find out? How do you find out? What is the logic? What is happening? If we replace 7 with 12, so there are two things happening. One is uh, at the end of the spectrum, we are having a very high value. Yeah. So right now the highest value is 7 and now the highest value is 12. So not just the end value is changing, the mean is also changing. So the mean is no longer the mean when we have 7. So the mean is changing, mean is also becoming higher. Yes. And at the end we have one sort of uh, little bit extreme value also. So one, one possibility is we actually calculate the standard deviation in both the cases and see. Is there any other logic which you can use? We are adding a very high value at the end. So can we say that it increases because there will be more uh, variation between each value now since the mean is higher? Yes, uh, it is likely that it will increase because each value's uh, difference from the mean will also increase if instead of 7, we have a 12. So 7 is closer to the other values like 4 and 6 here, but 12 is too far. So uh, the mean will change and the mean will be now more distant from uh, each of these values mean is likely to be more distant from each of these values now if we have 12. So standard deviation is much likely to be increased. So let us see what it says. We can click in It is correct. Now they have an explanation also. Let us see. How does the standard deviation change? The standard deviation increases because the data becomes more spread out. Yeah, I, I think we had a more robust logic than uh, what is given here. They have not considered, probably not considered that the mean is also changing. Yes, so actual standard deviation if we calculate with 7, it is 2.08, with 12, it is 3.8. So each value becomes more distant from the mean if we include it. Although the mean also changes, we also becomes higher. So have a Yes. No. So, so so let's say that you replace it, uh, you replace seven with eight. Since eight is still closer to the numbers that are there in the data set, will it stay the same or will it increase a bit? It will increase a little bit. Uh, the real tricky question would be seven with five. What happens then? Because it is decreasing, it is becoming even more closer to the rest. So if we Change seven with five, what is the true seven with five? What will be your standard deviation? So, okay. asking us? Yes, yes. Uh, I cannot oh. change the. I cannot change the question. Yes. I mean, uh, the question is fixed here. But uh, if we have to think about it, eight still it will uh, increase a little standard deviation because. All these one, four, two are distant from that A. But if we put five here, 
which is very near to the rest of the numbers what will happen to the standard deviation should increase most probably i mean yeah of course the test is to calculate but i think if we replace 7 by 5 standard deviation should decrease a little because five is even more closer to the rest of the numbers four is there six is there and it's fine seven is the highest five is not the highest five is somewhere in between already so it is uh, even closer to the mean by itself so you can calculate and check that becomes an exercise for you if uh, i have to choose say option i would say it decreases standard deviation decreases it is substituted by 5 or coincidentally it might come out to be seem like it will become same second question let us go to the second question shall we so is it possible to create a data set with four data points that has a standard deviation of 0 no <laughs> the options are very uh, informal and formally stated yeah. so again uh, take a minute don't worry about being right i mean uh, be afraid of being wrong we have everything it's a safe environment you can use your logic different different logic सो कहां सर अह यस यू आर सेइंग समथिंग यस सर सो सिंस स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन इट मेजर्स द वेरिएशन अम व्हेन इन अ स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन जीरो मींस दैट ईच डेटा सेट इज द सेम नंबर या राइट सो दैट मींस देन इट कैन बी इक्वल so then the standard deviation will be zero so only if the data set are equal to each other then it can be zero otherwise then yeah to because uh, yes only if all the four data points are equal we can have standard deviation as zero because the deviation we are not considering the sign we are squaring the deviation of each point from the mean so even if it is a little bit deviation there is a little bit deviation we will not get zero and if all the data points are different or uh, any of the data point is different so yes or no <laughs> we can go with yes create a data set with two data points they have not said different data points or same data points if they had put different word then definitely we would have said no way let's say but right now it is possible if all the data points are same so we can select yes okay this is correct if it is possible to it can you create two different data sets how about three 
yes, you can create any number of data sets as long as all the data points are same. So let us see how they are explained. How they are explained. In fact, there are infinite number of possible data sets. Here, here is one five 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 all same. Here is another eight 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 eight. Any data set where all the data points are same as because the distance from each data point on the means. Then they have gone ahead and looked at the calculations. Okay, so now coming to the yeah, this uh, this actually should carry more weightage if it is asked in any test. Can standard deviation be negative? And this should not actually take uh, even a minute. <laughs> can standard deviation be negative? Everybody, please try. Can standard deviation be negative? No, sir. No, it cannot be negative because they have also given a very good hint. Very good hint. Think about the formula. This is the formula. So this is the formula for standard deviation. First of all, it is inside the square root sign. And then you have only square terms here. So square terms are being added. Summation means all these square terms are being added. So all square terms are, will be positive. They are only being added. So there is no chance of standard deviation being negative it will be zero only when all the points are same. So can standard deviation be negative? No. Correct. I don't think we will be, we have to check the explanation. So it's clear. Standard deviation is a measure of spread of a data distribution. What do you think deviation means? Deviation means? how different the data is, how far the data is from the mean. That is a matter of definition. I hope it is clear. Deviation means how far a data point is from the mean. Standard deviation is measures the spread of the data. How spread out all the data points are on an average. On an average, how spread out all the data points are. Deviation is can be just for one point. Standard deviation is for the entire data set. Standard deviation is not just for one point. Number five. Here are the formulas for standard deviation and the formula for mean mean absolute deviation, both of which are measures of spread. Mean absolute deviation uh, can also be a measure of spread. So here we are only doing this. We are taking the absolute value of each deviation and taking the average of that. What are the similarities between the formulas? What are the differences? Yeah. So for this, let us take So uh, yes, uh, there is. It is in my mind that we had started correlation, correlation and covariance. We had discussed a problem. The solution of that problem we have not discussed uh, because many of you wanted revision, which is a good thing, very good thing. So, yes. so let us take this problem. One. Seven, six. It makes sense to arrange it in ascending order. So we arrange it in ascending order. One, six, seven. We will have. Um, we can take out the sum. 
We take absolute values of these variations. Absolute value of minus three will be three, minus two will be two, zero will be zero, two will be two, three will be three. Calculate standard deviation. We need to square these, square this x line minus x one square. So minus three square would be nine, minus two square would be two, zero square would be zero, two square would be two, three square would be now in the formula you know. Is the formula for standard deviation square root of summation of x i minus x one whole square divided by n. So this is the average deviation. Just a second, yes. Yes. Executive will be. Yes, minus seven. Ah, Sahu, Sahu, the year uh, Professor Sahu. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, I am taking lecture. You have my phone number? No, I don't. Uh, do you have mobile? Uh, yes, I have mobile. Please uh, give me a missed call. Then we can discuss immediately. Triple nine? Triple nine? Three zero zero eight six six three. During lunch time, I'll take it. Huh. It ends with three zero four nine. Thank you. Yes, sorry uh, for that. Yes. So to can do this calculation only, we have we made these columns. It will uh, be easier. So we have x i minus x bar whole square. We will sum this. This is summation. Right? This here is this here is summation. So we will sum this. Some of these this is 13, 0, 17, 26. Now we have square root of 26, and what is n? n is already 5. 1, 2, 3. You can create a column of serial number. Every time you don't have 
now that there are more numbers, it makes sense to have serial number. Square root of 26 by 5. So 26 by 5 would be around. And this is the standard dimension. Now, mean absolute dimensions, these are deviations. These are called deviations. These are absolute deviations. These are square root deviations. So absolute deviations are these 3, 2, 0, 2, and 3. What we do the mean absolute deviation? That is the average of these average of these deviations. What do we do? We take an average of these, we put the rest and divide by the number of observations that is made. So total of these will be. So, summation of absolute value of the deviations is n. And m in the mean absolute deviation is n divided by i. That is 2. So, now coming back to the question. Here are the formulas for standard deviation and the formula for mean absolute deviation, both of which are measures of spread. Both show that on an average, how far each data point is from the mean of the data. What are the similarities between the formula and what are the differences? What are the similarities? So here also we are calculating the deviations, but we are not giving much importance to the higher deviation and mean absolute deviation. Here, the higher the deviation, the higher is the weightage of that in standard deviation. Yeah. So higher deviations have, a, have more penalty in standard deviation quality. Higher deviations, data which are much farther from the mean, contribute more to the standard deviation. So uh, we saw the formula, we saw an example also. <laughs> Should be clear how these calculations are. Many, many times initially we are a little confused or afraid of uh, the summation signs or what do they mean? In short, it is written. We also try to cancel things sometimes <laughs> in the formula for correlation. We also wanted to cancel a few terms. So we cannot cancel because this is actually 
one square plus another square plus the third square plus the fourth square like that. Yeah. So it is not just three numbers in the bracket. And what I'm saying is, let's say, say for calculating this, what exactly we are doing is nine plus four plus zero here. here These values 9 plus 4 plus 0 plus 9 0 plus 2 plus 9 divided by 5. So, suppose there is uh, another term in the denominator and some formula say there is one xi minus x mark, summation of xi minus x mark. Summation of xi minus x bar is there in the denominator. So, summation of just xi minus x bar is there in the denominator. That means we will take these numbers. We will take these numbers xi minus x bar. So, in the denominator, we will write minus 3 plus minus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3. Now you can see you cannot just cancel anything here. You cannot cancel this nine with this three. Yeah. Like that. Nine say a three can cancel with here. A two say a two cancel with here. We cannot do like that because it is summation. These are different terms. These are different different terms. So we cannot cancel. Although notation wise, when we write in terms of x. Notation wise, it looks that uh, looks like we have written something similar. So, uh, numerator and denominator sometimes will cancel, but it is not so because it is summation, not individual individual terms. Yeah. So yes. So I hope a uh, few of the things got clarified here. This is the mail uh, everybody must have received. Yeah. Yeah, this is your syllabus or mentor. So you must have also received this. This I have put into uh, some of the activities. Yeah, so this is the syllabus measures of central tendency, including geometric and harmonic mean. Okay, we need to practice that also. Geometric and harmonic we need to practice uh, that we will do uh, <laughs> that uh, you will uh, have to do now. Measures of dispersion, which we are doing today. Histogram, pie chart, and box plot. I think box plot we have devoted enough time. And skewness, skewness, the three formula, moments, Pearson's coefficient of skewness. And Bowles formula. Bowles formula was the one with quartiles. And Pearson's formula is the one with mean and median. And two tosses. So cube terms are there in skewness, and to the power four terms are there in two tosses formula. Then quartiles, percentiles, and deciles that we have discussed in detail. What else a couple of times we have discussed, you can watch the earlier videos. Percentiles and decides also, we have devoted one uh, entire class in percentiles and decides. So decides actually are converted into percentiles, then we solve it. Like the first decile will be 10 percentile, the second decile will be 20th percentile, the third decile will be 30th percentile like that. So in case of decide, we first convert it into percentile, then solve it. And uh, in percentile problems, you can do two things with percentiles. You can do two things. Either given a number, number you find the percentile of that number, or you find out a number corresponding to a given percentile. That like what will be the 25th percentile? What will be the 35th percentile? Yeah, what will be the 50th percentile that you can do or given a number that is a given a set of number yeah we uh, take some number in between say uh, 
like this only. So we can try to find out what is the percentile of six. What is the percentile of six? What is the percentile of four? Like that we can find. So yes. If you're stuck somewhere, you can send me an email with a, a screenshot of what you have done. I should be able to suggest the next few steps. And this is also a very good resource for practice, for further practice. It is free. Yeah, free and uh, you will really uh, like this person. <laughs> he has given many talks on YouTube also, TED platform. Even Bill Gates is a very big fan of uh, this portal and this person. Probably they are friends now, close friends now. Yes. So uh, these are a few basic practice of standard deviation. You can take a data set and calculate the standard deviation using the formula, using this formula. Okay. So anybody looking for uh, simpler problems, you can do problems like this. Yes, so, uh, okay. so uh, is this practice are these practice sessions giving you more confidence? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, please try out uh, the other areas also. First two we have seen. Histogram pie chart. You just have to know how to draw. Box plot needs some details. So just by the position of the second quartile, can you find out the skewness? It will be right skew, left skew. So box plot and skewness are related that we have discussed uh, in the class. Basically, a, a very short and very short I can tell you. So box plot can be vertical or horizontal either way. Let us take a horizontal box plot. So a box plot is like this. This point is first vertex. Somewhere it will be second quarter and this is the third quarter. Okay. Suppose the second quarter is here. Here. So, and uh, the tails are almost similar. Just by looking at this, we see that this portion is higher. We can infer we know that the data, the original data is left skew. This implies the original data is left skew. Left skew means if we draw a frequency graph, frequency distribution graph of the data, we will see that the tail is towards the left. Such sharp turns So the tail, the tail portion is towards the left. So this is left side. These inferences, uh, this is box plot. This is the frequency distribution graph. The skewness also that is marked here. 
there is strong relationship between box plot and skewness. Skewness formula, we know. Do you remember the skewness formula? And Kutosa's formula. Can you refer back to your notes and anybody? So, so one by n. Okay. Uh, then uh, summation of uh, x i minus x bar. Um, then to the power of four. Then. Uh, what kurtosis it is to the power of four? Oh, kurtosis. Yeah, okay, wait, I'm saying quotas. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So you want the moments formula? Yes, the moments formula. Uh, minus it... I upon N summation of X bar, X I minus X bar to the power of three. And divided by, I don't know what that symbol is called, so I keep forgetting it. Standard division? Yes. Oh, yes, standard division. Yes. Into three. Yes. And here in Kutosa, so it is standard division of four. Okay. So these are the moments formula. These are the most robust formula. Only one uh, formula for two persons we have discussed. For skewness, we have discussed a couple of other formulae. One is Pearson's formula. Pearson's formula. One is Smallest formula. So, what is Bowles formula? U1 plus U3. This is Min what I, yeah, what I minus two Q2 upon Q3 minus Q1. Minus Q3 minus Q1 is uh, also called interquartile range. Inter Q2 minus uh, Q3 minus Q1 is this distance. This distance. Q2 minus Q1. I, Q1, enter quarter. And what is the Pearson's formula? Pearson's formula is, uh, I would say, the weakest formula to calculate skewness, but sometimes it helps. So, what is the Pearson's formula? Median a uh, mean minus median upon standard deviation. Mean minus median standard. There is a version with mode also, but uh, of which we know that not all data sets will have a mode, so we do not use that. So three into mean minus median standard deviation. That is the Pearson's formula. Students. Yeah. So yes. So practice as much as you can. Watch the videos. Do the problems we have done in the class with little bit different numbers. Jahan pe five hai, ab wahan pe ten le liji, five point five le liji, and so on. See how uh, different results you get. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Then uh, we will wind up for today here and uh, this is probably your last lecture before midterms yeah. so all the very best for midterms thank you sir thank you thank you do everything in a relaxed way we have uh, understood we have discussed and understood everything
there are good resources, simple resources like Mark Academy. To do your practice, you have the videos. Be confident and calmly, very calmly, attempt the questions in the test. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Best. Have a nice day.